Okay, I want to do another quick video of uh, an AR pistol. I built this one a couple uh, months ago, actually, because um, I kind of wanted, with the parts I had in inventory, I kind of wanted to see how inexpensively, I don't want to use the word cheap, because that, that word's misconstrued often, how inexpensively I could put one together. So my lower priced parts, which don't always equate to lower quality parts, uh, are what I tried to use on this. Uh, and I've since changed it because uh, somebody that visited it not too long ago decided they wanted this one but they wanted me to change the grip and the and the uh, brace this is uh, spec wise as far as what you're getting is very similar to the one i uh i uh did the video on yesterday but if you were to buy this one as opposed to the other one this one would be about 400 dollars cheaper so often people wonder you know what's the difference well effectively nothing you know uh, they're both 10 and a half inch barreled AR pistols. Um, for example, this one uses uh, the bra a, a different model of brace, but from the same company. So the other the other gun I promoted was an SBA3 brace. This is their SBA4 brace. Again, it's not a buttstock. This is a an AR pistol. Uh, but uh, otherwise, the uh, receiver set on this doesn't have the uh, bells and whistles as the Arrow Precision. These are uh, this is an Anderson manufacturing, which honestly I use mo more of these in my in my projects than I do any other single uh, type of receiver. Um, a lot of people hate on them, but I've had absolutely not a not a problem with them. And bang for your buck, they you just can't go wrong unless you're wanting something that's a little better looking. But performance wise, it's the same. So this one. Uh, a ten and a half inch barrel, just like the other one. This is a 416R stainless steel barrel, um, and it's a one and eight twist. The other, the other gun was a one and seven twist. There's a whole thing with twist and bullet weight and all that that you may or may not know. This one's got your basic flash hider on it, so that's going to save you some money. Uh, for example, you're you're looking at about ten dollars for this A2 birdcage style flash hider, uh, and muzzle devices. When you start talking muzzle brakes or compensators, the sky's the limit as far as how much you want to spend. I think the the price point on the one that was on the other gun, that particular device is probably in the $60, $70, I don't remember exactly range, so there's $50 there. This handguard is a uh, an older design. This is key mod that, that defines what type of uh, op or accessories you can mount to it. The other one is MWOC. Price-wise, that doesn't matter. Um, but this is a Aero Precision made by the same company that made the receivers on the other gun. This Aero Precision, their, their older Quantum line, and it's a little, it's, it's significantly bigger in diameter, which uh, works for the, the gentleman that's, that's uh, going to take this gun because he's got uh, quite a bit bigger hands. Even my hands aren't real big. I'd say they're mediums. Um, but uh, but this, this is a comfortable feel for me. Uh, and the other handguard that, that was promoted yesterday was the Diamond Head uh, VRST line. And it's uh, much thinner, uh, more suited to smaller hands or even medium hands. I had no problem with that one either. But somebody with large hands probably wouldn't wouldn't be the right uh, handguard for them. Uh, but this, the vertical grip, or not, I'm sorry, not vertical, the angled grip and the hand stop, very similar to the one on the other gun. The same angled grip, actually. Um, bolt carrier group from the same manufacturer, same specs, actually, uh, on this gun. Uh, the upper receiver here does not have a, an ejection port, uh, what's, what's actually called a dust cover. Um, that's, you know, been removed from here. There's not even an option to put one on. Saves a little bit of weight, you know, an ounce or two, and it saves some money. But, uh, it, you know, where you don't have to buy the, uh, the actual ejection port. It's like I've got company. Um, ejection port cover. But uh, it doesn't have an ambidextrous safety on it. Uh, that's not a big deal for 80% of the people out there. Um, it does have a uh, uh, stainless steel trigger in it. The other one had a nickel bore on. And uh, this grip is, is uh, a little girthier than the other one. This is the, uh, I don't want to lie, it's a Magpul K2 Plus. And what the plus is, it means it's the, the coating on it is rubberized. And, and the gentleman specifically wanted that. Um, I don't love them myself. I don't hate them, but uh, I probably wouldn't went that way. But that's just personal preference. That's the beautiful thing about uh, having somebody make a gun for you is, is you can decide exactly what you want on it, and what you don't. And I had a different brace on here. Uh, the brace I had was was not quick adjustable. You could adjust it with a set screw uh, and with a tool, and then you adjust it, and that's where it was it was it was unless you wanted to move it again. But this was a quick quick adjust, just like the one promo yesterday. The uh, sights, 
on this gun are uh, are uh, more on the budget line as, as far as compared to the ones that uh, were on the gun that we looked at yesterday. Uh, these are no frills, but they're fully adjustable uh, elevation in the front and windage in the rear. They do uh, fold down. These are metal construction as opposed to the ones were yesterday with polymer. They don't uh, quick pop up. You actually have to lift them up. But they do lock in place. And then there's a little button you push to be able to fold them back down. So they're totally functional. Uh, no, no problem with them whatsoever. Uh, I think that's it. This, this uh, grip also has a storage compartment in the base of it, similar to the other one. But I just wanted to give you an idea what what uh, you know what some of the differences are when you start talking price. And, and I really try to not use the word cheap, but there is there is such thing as cheap. But uh, inexpensive or a value-oriented part is a, a better word to use because quality-wise, you know that's when I when you start talking poor quality, that's when I start thinking cheap myself. But if you got any questions, uh, drop them in the comments. And again. Feel free uh, to give me a like and subscribe on my YouTube channel if you feel so uh, inclined. And that's it for now. Thanks for your time.